Happy New Year, and welcome back to the Eric Mays Show. This is going to be the first half hour show in um, 2006. Um, the first part of it, as you can see, I know you're looking for me. I'll be with you in a minute, but I'm just trying to do a follow-up on my last show. Um, I told you I had went to the library, and I had pulled up old newspaper articles and had read more about um, Bob Leonard, Robert Leonard, and that's just a copy of one of the newspaper articles that I found that you're looking at. I had so many calls, and most of them were saying, hey, I appreciate the information. You did a good job. I didn't know. And um, I had a couple of them call me. They were mad talking about we trying to get the city back together. Why you got to talk about stuff like that? They must ain't never really watched this guy. But I'm going to flip through a couple of these. That's the one where I was saying he was indicted and he still wouldn't quit, kind of similar to what's going on now. And then that one, Leonard uses a phony name at the casino. And I talked about that. And then finally, Leonard gets a five-year term. All right, Paul. But uh, basically, what I wanted to do, I wanted to follow up on that a little bit, I'm sure, as he keep talking about stuff. We'll um, keep you posted, and we'll talk about him. But as a result of that show, I had mentioned also that I was going to court with his live-in woman friend, Sally Hayward, and I did. And um, the Flint Journal did an article about that. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, kind of put this up and move it close and you can help me, and I'm going to kind of show what they had said. Let me find it. It's not going to work. I'll just read it. What I'm going to do, I'll read it. It says, activists could face trouble if he attends meetings. They're talking about me. I'm the activist, I guess. I, well, I know I am. Flint political activist Eric Mays likely won't be attending Flint City Council meetings for the next six months. Now, I've been in council meetings um, 20 to 25 years. But Flint community political activist Eric Mays won't be attending Flint City Council meetings for the next six months. Genesee Circuit Judge Judah Fullerton upheld a personal protection order Thursday against Mays filed by Sally Haywood. Um, Sally Haywood is the Bob Leonard living girlfriend and a mayoral appointee, it says a mayoral appointee who works at City Hall and videotapes council meetings for Mayor Don Williamson. Um, now, she don't have to videotape those council meetings because that's paid for. Everybody knows the council meetings is taped. I don't think she's really taping them for the mayor. She's taping them to turn over to the Bob Leonard show, and that's how they was able to campaign and try to discredit council people and people like myself. I alleged that the intent of the PPO order was to keep me out of council meetings. The article goes on to say, the order which was initially granted this summer is now in effect to June, that's June 2006, and prevents Mays from following Haywood or approaching her at her workplace, home, or in public. I've never really followed Sally Haywood. While Mays attended meetings during his bid to overturn the order, he now says he will probably stay away. Might stay away, might not. Haywood's attorney promised action if he shows up. Now, her attorney is George Colleen, so he's in the paper now saying he promises action if I shows up. Well, that's some more mess because George Colleen knows what the deal is on this PPO. George Colleen knows I can show up at council meeting. He can take any action he wants. Um, what the intent of the PPO is for me to stay 20 feet away from Sally Haywood. I have not approached or said nothing to Sally Haywood in six months. 
And I doubt if I approach or say anything to Sally Haywood for another six months, a year, two years, or whatever. But what I did do, I mentioned her name numerous of times as I spoke on city council microphone. And so this particular PPO order and this particular proceeding, now I've got to debate whether I appeals this decision from Fullerton's court to the Court of Appeals because I've contacted the ACLU. Now, if the ACLU is looking at it, I hope that they'll pay attention to this Mays and Sally Haywood case at City Hall. City Hall being a public building, I don't think people can technically or really keep you away. The allegations that Sally Haywood made about what I said as I spoke for 42 um, minutes on the council microphone, they're video recorded. Uh, my comments are there to be heard to this day. Um, the city clerk is the keeper of the records. They have the videotapes. And what surprised me in Fullerton's courtroom, and I'm still trying to research and find out, why would not Judge Fullerton allowed me to present evidence to prove that Sally Haywood and Leonard Nim was lying on me in order to try to obtain this order from her court. I thought the easiest thing that I would be able to do would be able to go in and present witnesses, videotapes, and evidence, and that um, Haywood would be found in contempt. So I'll, I'm continuing because I represented myself. Well, they say you shouldn't represent yourself, but in this particular case I did, I'll let Sally Haywood and Leonard and them pay for lawyers. So I'm researching that, and you haven't seen or heard the end of that particular case, and we'll see if in 2006 I show up at city council meetings like I've been doing for the past 20 years. But um, let me finish this article. It says, Haywood's attorney promises action if he shows up. Mays, who once advised Williamson but has since tried to recall him and has filed a lawsuit over Williamson's involvement in the recent city council elections, denies any wrongdoing and plans to appeal. He said the order was filed as part of a Williamson conspiracy to keep his voice from meetings. But George Colleen, Haywood's attorney, said Mays was convicted in 2002 for aggravated stalking. Mays says he's working to have that conviction overturned. Haywood, who has videotaped meetings for years for different reasons, originally got the order in June after alleging two incidents in which Mays which she accused Mays of aggressively shouting and threatening her and following her at City Hall. Basically, um, I'm still going to try to prove that in this court, in this, on this show and in court, I'll prove to my viewers that um, she's lied and she should be found in contempt. When we went to court after my show had aired that I did on Leonard and I talked about her, the biggest surprise I found was that Sally Haywood started to cry in court. I mean, she said I had violated the PPO. I ain't been found in no violation of the PPO. But she said I had violated the PPO. I had did the Eric Mays show and talked about her and said she should be found in contempt. And then in high drama at that point when she said the Eric Mays show, she broke down and started crying. I'm like, man, this is some high drama in court because I, I should be crying. If you, if you ever seen Bob Leonard talk about me on my show, I should be broke down and crying. But that's the um, Leonard and Haywood saga. It'll continue. Eric May's show, I'll show you what's happening. But um, as we move into the new year, this is 2006. I'll await anxiously because as I picked up and read the paper the other day, I noticed that um, the mayor was kind of boasting about a six 
$6.1 million surplus. He's got, he said he got a $6.1 million surplus. The city audit was December 31st. It was supposed to end. Now it's the new year, so he's bragging. We got a $6.1 million surplus. But what kind of made me upset about hearing him announce that, he said at the end of the story in the journal, he said something about... Um, now that we've gotten all the thieves out of City Hall. Now that was kind of appalling to me. This guy is steady calling um, old council people and different people thieves. And in my opinion, I think um, the most crooked people or the most dishonest people, the mayor, is still in City Hall. And so I take offense to that. Every time I read a public statement where he downs a city official or talks about something, I'm going to come back right out and make a public statement on my show, and I'm going to be kind of tit for tat. So I don't think all of the dishonest or crooked people is out of City Hall. And I'm going to start working right now. And um, I'm, I'm listening to this guy brag. He thinks that he'll clearly win in two years. I don't think he'll win in two years. I think he's steady dividing the city with those type of negative comments. Um, I know my friend Ed Taylor, who has kids, and Johnny Coleman, who has a daughter that plays basketball at Hamity. I mean, these kids go to school, and um, you don't want, the mayor of the city of Flint calling your dad or saying thieves, you know. These people ain't no thieves. They ain't been convicted of nothing. And I mean, it's just appalling. And I think that the people in the community, preachers who running around with him, council presidents and others who's running around with him, you know, I put it on the recall language. Nobody's just gonna sit back and let him beat up on honorable people. Um, he attacked Congressman Kildee. Kildee's going into an election. He said he'll run Patsy Lou and throw Kildee out. This ain't none of that going to happen. He's all talk, and I'm, I'm getting about tired of it. And so people should um, stand up. One, $6.1 million surplus. Think about it. Frank Timmons, who cut grass, is owed $100. And 49,000. That would drop the surplus down under 6 million. It's down to 5 million. You got a lot of different bills and other things that we know should be paid. We know they will be paid. I look at um, the complete towing thing in Fullerton's court. They won 400 and something thousand dollars. 400 and some thousand dollars. We know this have to be paid. We know it's other people howling about getting paid. Williamson's game was to hold back money, not take care of business, um, not fund the police department, not address crime, not create jobs. So at the end of the year, he could say, we've got a six point one million dollar surplus and all the thieves are gone i'm here to tell you we don't have a six point one million dollar surplus for real and we hurting in the area of police protection and crime um You've got to hire more police and detectives. You've got to address these 49 murders that you, you, you've got to solve crime. You've got to make Flint a safe place. You've got to give police raises. You've got to address their contractual issues. So, you know, just to speak on that a little bit, um, I don't think we really got a $6.1 million surplus. But I will say this. I was um, looking at something in a store the other day. Um, I think I was at Family Dollar over on the 
corner near uh, Martin Luther King and um, Dayton Street. And I seen a flyer and I picked it up and I said, I got to talk about this if only for five or three or four or five minutes on my show because I've heard a lot of people talking about it. And you, when I mention it, as I'm getting ready to do right now, you tell me if you've heard it. I seen a flyer, and a, on this flyer, it was a picture of a guy who had just got beat up so bad. His face was beat up, and he was laying and looked like a hospital bed. And I took that uh, flyer to city council meeting, and I spoke about it on the city council microphone. And I'm going to speak about it here because if, if this story is true, it it's believable, it's outrageous, and I think it needs to be addressed. I'm referring to the rumors and the story that we're hearing out on the north side of Flint about a store located on the corner of Hamilton and Martin Luther King D&H. D&H store, allegedly there was a guy, according to the flyer that I was reading, um, a guy was allegedly stealing a cupcake and a beer. And the guy came from behind the counter, and I don't know what he might have allegedly beat him with or what happened, but the rumor has it that this guy got beat up so bad with a bat or with something or kicked or whatever it was. We don't know. But I, my point is it that should be an investigation and we need to know what happened in DNH store because this guy got beat so bad he ended up in a coma now I'm understanding that this was a family man I don't think if he if he did take a cupcake or a beer he shouldn't have did that and, and he should be prosecuted if he's caught doing that but it kind of reminds me when I was third vice president of the Flint branch of the NAACP, a case that I protested and picketed it outside of um, City Hall on Miles Williams and Toby Harris. Um, Miles Williams and Toby Harris had broken into a vending machine out at Swartz Creek Golf Course. And um, Gilmore and Hartley police officers, they didn't just arrest them, they beat them um, with their butt ends of their shotguns and kicked them or whatever. And we took on that issue and I think Miles Williams and Toby Harris um, end up selling with them guys for about $10,000 as I recall. But I think we need to look closer at this as a community. The NAACP, Miss Gilchrist and them, you know, I wish they would just kind of keep an arm's length distance from this particular mayor because I think he's trying to do him like how he had Dumas, you know, come into the office, being around him, and it makes him a little ineffective in the um, NAACP. Um, as far as the appointment that Williamson just gave Miss Gilchrist on the Hurley board, um, talking about now she can maybe help address those issues with the black lady um, who was the COO over at Hurley. Well, that's fine, excuse me. But they can be addressed whether she's on the board or not. Watch when this guy try to give you something because most of the times he did it to me. He'll try to give you something to quiet you down over here or to not look at him. And while I'm talking about that, I must mention the upcoming um, ballot question. I don't know why the city council, this new city council, even had put this on the ballot, you know, about the ombudsman's office. The people, the, the young man and his family, if he did get beat by um, people up at D&H and get put into a coma, they should be filing complaints with the ombudsman's office if the police department is, is not investigating this. I should be able to file a complaint at the ombudsman's office because me, Eric Mays, can you believe it? I went into a store 
and some of these guys is crazy. I was returning bottles and trying to get change. Next thing I know, the guy come from behind the counter and he was throwing me like a wet noodle and knocking down chips. I'm like, where is these guys getting so mad they coming from behind the counter? Now he got mad because he said you could only return a dollar worth of bottles at one time. I had three dollars <laughs> worth of bottles. Well, of course I went out um, in his parking lot and um, I called 911 on my cell phone and that complaint is filed and I told the police, you might want to look at his um, video cameras to see what happened. So I'm going to wait to see what happens because it scared the hell out of me. Um, guy fussing about three dollars in bottles and he comes from behind the counter and he's throwing me around. I'm all into the chips and stuff. So young people, I'm finding out I got a lot of young viewers. I got people watching in high school and uh, I'm running into people in their 20s. They're watching the Eric Mays show. I thought my viewers was just political people, but I've got a lot of viewers and I appreciate you. And when I come on sometime, we'll call a friend, have somebody watch. Call me and um, say, hey, I got something I want to talk about politically on your show. I mean, I can have guests. This is the Eric May show. So um, call me and let me know how I can help serve you in getting messages out. This is a short show. Um, this is a half an hour um, on Tuesday after the Leonard show and an hour on Monday. We coming off of the holiday. I wanted to throw a little something together as we head into 2006. Uh, my time is running short, but I got some treats planned for you guys as we go into um, the new year. I've got a show that I don't want to kind of talk about, but my next show that I'll sit and record today is Monday, January the 2nd if I'm not mistaken, yeah, like I said, Happy New Year. Um, I've got a show that's going to surprise Flint and Genesee County, and um, I would try to urge you guys to stay tuned because when I air this show, I'll identify it. I'll say this is the one that I'm talking about, but it'll take you, I'll give you a hint, it'll take you inside, and you'll be able to see something from the inside that you really haven't seen on public access before. I'll just put it like that. You'll enjoy um, the way I'm going to put this show together. So um, once again, um, I've covered some topics today. I did my follow-up on the Leonard thing. Um, that was a necessary show. I had to deal with who this guy is and his credibility. So I appreciate the positive calls, the negative calls, um, it's just like when I was running around with Williamson. Forgive them, for they know not what they say and do. Um, I'm going to continue to um, continue to put out information that I think is necessary in light of the political aspect of what's going on and where people are getting their information from. The guy who allegedly got beat up um, at DNH about this cupcake. Everybody who knows um, anybody in the police department, Darrell Buchanan, Williamson, the NAACP, I know the Muslim brothers have been involved in it, and because um, I've talked to them, I, their number was on the bottom of the flyer. Let's pay attention to these stores. It's outrageous, and let's try to clean up what's happening at them. People standing outside, people scared to go in, the owners coming behind the glass, taking the law into their own hands. Dial 911 from behind that glass. Don't come from behind that glass beating nobody up. That's violence. Um, the $6.1 million surplus, um, $3 million spent on 20 new garbage trucks. Um, I think we'll see some brand new garbage trucks going up and down the street, but <laughs> we still ain't got no police. Let's try to get this administration to protect the city, spend money on police versus garbage. I'll pick up on some more of these issues on the next Eric Mays show. It's been a ball. It's been quick. It's been fun. 
See you next week. Hey Flint 10th graders. Hey Flint 10th graders. Have you got what it takes? Have you got what it takes? Have you got what it takes to be Judge Marable Student of the Month? Judge Marable Student of the Month! Win savings bonds. A day at the court with Judge Marable. Community recognition and more. You could be Student of the Year and win $500. For more information, call 766-8985 or go to judgemarable.net. Are you interested in helping your community? Are you concerned about the homeless, literacy, or other community needs? Would you consider mentoring a young person, helping an older adult, or planting a garden? Then you're a perfect candidate to volunteer here. It's a web page designed to match your time, talent, and interests with a variety of volunteer opportunities right here in your community. Just visit www.volhere.org and enjoy a rewarding time doing what you do best, a service of the Resource Center. What is the most influential time in a child's life? Age six, eight, 12? Actually, it's between three and eight every afternoon. That's the time a kid is most likely to get into trouble. Or worse. Which is exactly why that's the time the boys and girls clubs open their doors and their arms to kids all over the country every day. When kids walk into these clubs, they're surrounded by people who care what happens to them. Adults who make sure these children continue to learn and grow long after the school bell rings. But there are still thousands more kids who need our help. Thousands of kids who need help to prepare for a positive future. Please help keep these doors open. Support the Boys and Girls Clubs. The positive place for kids.